You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Hi, I'm Althea Resendria for Life on Gabriela TV. We're presenting this recorded meeting from March 6th of the Board of the Gabriela Fire Protection Improvement District. The seven trustees provide long-range planning and oversight for the Gabriela Volunteer Fire Department. Six of them were present, along with Fire Chief Will Sprogus. Here, Board Chair Paul Giffen attended the meeting virtually, thus assigning Trustee John Muller as Acting Chair. The meeting starts with the Communications Committee report, addressing the issue of misinformation and disinformation in the community, the importance of providing accurate information, and the effort to prevent them from continuously occurring. The Planning Committee report provides information on the survey responses from the past month and plans to have a public meeting to discuss community input. The board chair notes that the election committee is set to dissolve after the election policy recommendation is accepted. The fire chief reports on calls, upcoming events, recruitment, and an accident involving a ladder truck, prompting discussions on purchasing a replacement. The board approves the release of $19,000 from the insurance money to purchase a new vehicle and will further review the finances to discuss equipping in the next meeting. The fire chief also outlines the fuel consumption report and successful grant applications for EV chargers, aiming to reduce the carbon footprint of the fire department operation. Finally, the board discusses amendments to the election policy and updates on Freedom of Information and Privacy Act requests. They also propose to move the corporate officer position to full-time with a monthly salary of $4,850 and agree to introduce authorization to the hiring committee. Here's the meeting. We yeah. acknowledge that this meeting is taking place on the unceded lands of the Stony Brook Nation. Thank you, Chris. Um, so the first order of business will be to look at the minutes um, from the February 7th meeting. Has everyone had a chance to look at that? Yeah. yeah. Um, can I call for a motion to approve the minutes of the February 7th meeting? Yeah. Second, Charlene. Any questions, comments on the minutes? No. All in favor of approving? Paul? Paul approved as well. Great. Um, is there any correspondence? We came in. Okay, no correspondence. No financial reports in this particular meeting. Uh, so we're on to the committee reports, which is the first item of business communication committee. Um, so the communications committee, um, it has worked really hard to put a policy together that was presented and approved at the last meeting. Um, at that time, I also read out an article from 1967, which addressed the, the sort of um, growing uh, um, potential that small communities have to um, build misinformation and disinformation within a community that causes an awful lot of consternation. And it disheartens me when I continue to see things like that happening, um, however many years later. Uh, and also, you know, makes me laugh at times. And I did, I think, about three years ago, say that when we were on, when we were onboarding new um, trustees, that we should have a list of of um, rumors and innuendos that persistently uh, come up over and over and over again, and how often they've been debunked. And I still think that that might be a really good idea, so that when new trustees hear it out in the public, they can say, "Oh yeah, yeah, that." That, you know, that comes up every two years or that comes up after every year after this kind of a thing and this is what happens and this is why this happens and why that happens. Because we have people that come up to us over and over and over again and say, I heard this. And the new one right now is that we lost stuff. And I find that really interesting. And I'm pretty sure that if Paula was here, Paula would be absolutely horrified to find out that we've lost stuff. And um, so that is the new rumor right now, that apparently we have lost stuff. So um, I'm probably going to say and go out on a limb and say we probably did not lose stuff. So let's debunk that one right now. 
And if people actually have honest to God questions that they want answered, this is a great forum to come do it. Other thing is pick up a phone, give us a call, come on in, say hi, talk to the corporate administrative officer, give the chief a call and say, hey, I heard this. What's the truth behind this? Because there's a huge difference out there between information, misinformation, and disinformation. And I think it's, it's time for people to start understanding the difference. When you're putting information out that is correct and it's useful, that's one thing. If you put misinformation out there and you know that it's, you find out later that it's wrong, you have an opportunity to fix it. If you put disinformation out there, you have done something that you probably deliberately know was not right or you've left out information. And I'm talking to all of us in this room that you've put out something that is incomplete, you haven't heard the whole story, you heard it from so-and-so and then so-and-so told so-and-so and somebody told so-and-so. And pretty soon you have a rumor that um, somebody's building something behind somebody's shed that's going to be used by somebody, and that's what happened in 1967 when they were starting up a fireball. And I think we need to, as a community, come together and stop doing stuff like that. And that is the thing that I think the communications committee should start doing at every meeting, is if you hear something <coughs> in the community that sounds like misinformation or disinformation, I would like to ask you to come to us and bring it to us and let us try to answer it for you with accurate information at the time that we're all here to answer it with you and for you. Sorry, that's my communications report. Okay, in, in addition to that, we've now had the all the replies back from the surveys that we put out. Okay. That's the next one. So the next one? Yeah. That'll be part of the plan. Sorry, jump the gun. No problem, let's jump into that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. Any more? Uh, yeah, right at the beginning, though, I must make a clear up something, is that uh, the Sangu very calmly arranged for us to have the advert in and they uh, supplied us with a QR code, which we didn't realize, and, and it was totally unintentional, and nor did the uh, sounder office staff know that the QR code was only valid for one week. Mm -hmm. And then it linked to a pay site. Mm -hmm. As soon as we realized that, on the day when, that, when people were starting to be asked to pay, uh, I put a new QR code onto the websites. I put a, an explanation into the notice board in the village and, and, an, and an apology. So I'll make this apology again now. It was not our intent to mislead anybody, nor was it the sounders. It was just a error. But I'm in the process now of correlating all that uh, data to pass on to the planning committee. Do you have a total of how many respondents you've heard about? 38. Thank you. I forgot to do it. <laughs> uh, are we going to have late arrivals? <laughs> uh, we did have a, sorry, we did have a closing date of the 28th, but I mean, but it is. I don't think we can. I don't think we can. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I don't think we can extend it. Thank, thank you very much for considering it. Though. Sorry. No, no. Thank, thank you for even thinking about it. Yeah. Do you uh, think the data from that will be at the next meeting? I think we'll be ready for the next meeting, and there are some very interesting comments. There's a wide range. Uh, I would like to see later, you know information right out there to the public, warts and all, everything that was in there. And I'd like to maybe think that the planning committee will have a public meeting at some point to discuss what the public put in. Um, there are some very valid points in there, which I think the board should take on board. Okay. Thank you. Anything else from the planning committee? Okay, finance committee. Um, 
Well, had, we had an informal finance meeting um, last week. Just uh, myself, Jesse, and um, Henry. And we just looked at the statements that we're planning to send to the auditor, uh, all the accounting that's going out to him, to the auditor team, sorry, not just him. And uh, yeah, I just reviewed that and um, yeah, so it's coming, that's gonna be ready for the AGM. And there's nothing else ready to really, really report there at this time. Give them a chance to review it before we um, release it to the public. But uh, it's in the works. Okay, so business email committees. Yeah, I think at this point we've been so hyper focused on other things that have been going on and now with the April election coming up. Um, I have things ready to go, but I don't think it, this is the right time to start focusing on it. And because we're not using email really for doing anything, I'm, I'm happy to have it um, just sit there ready to go for when we have the time to actually sit down and go through it so that people can concentrate on it rather than the four or five other things that we've got on our plates right now. Great. Okay, thank you. Election, please. Yeah, John, if I could speak to that. Yeah. Uh, the election committee provided at the last meeting a uh, recommendation for the election policy, and it was accepted by the board. Uh, once that happened, uh, I bought the election committee is dissolved, and I would ask that the corporate officer remove that as an agenda item. Okay. All in favor of that? All right, we're good as an agenda. Uh, there's no guest speakers for today, as far as I know. So that makes us more on to the fire chief report. All right, welcome everyone. So the calls for the month of February, 38 calls in total. They break down as, as follows. Uh, motor vehicle incidents, one. First responder calls, five. Public assists, five. Alarms activated, three. Power lines, one. Miscellaneous fire, one. And two burn key points. Good. Um, <clears throat> so a busy month ahead of us. Um, the few tasks for the Superior Show, credit, the Superior Tanker accreditation is scheduled for Saturday, April 6th. And we'll be retesting on residential and commercial status for Gabriel. Membership and equipment is ready for the test. The there will be a practice session next week and it's planned to run between Camp Miriam and Pilot Bay. I have posted the position for Deputy Fire Chief. It is posted on the BC Fire Chiefs Association and will be up on our website as well linked to social media. The position now will be a full-time position. The deputy will be managing training, fire prevention, and will be part of op the operational team. So we look forward to, to seeing some applications come in there. Saturday, May 11th, the Gabriel Volunteer Fire Department will be hosting an open house here at the fire hall. Uh, the theme of the open house is emergency preparedness week. So our usual Partners, the RCMP, BC Ambulance, Gertie, mm -hmm. uh, the Medical Foundation, a uh, whole bunch of other organizations will be there to support that. As well, we're looking to have a, um, there will be all kinds of games and family friendly events, uh, a kids' play zone in the back, and we're even welcoming businesses to. Uh, supply fire smart uh, materials and offer their skills to help fire smart the island. So we're looking forward to that. And our fire smart coordinator, Carol Waldo, will be organizing that. She's taking the lead. So big thanks to Carol. Thank you, Carol. Um, yeah, uh, we're, look, we're also starting our recruitment drive. So this is the first public notice that we're starting our recruitment drive. We're looking, we're focusing on fire hall number two. Fire hall number one is full at this time. 
Um, and we're looking for capable candidates uh, that lives down in the South End. So, um, <coughs> so if, any, if you know anyone, please direct them to our website at gabrielfire.ca and go down to the recruitment section and you can grab an application off the recruitment section there. Um, we'll also be publicizing it, obviously, at the open house and we're going to close the uh, recruitment drive just after the open house start uh, interviewing candidates. Um, so on some sad news, on February 7th, our last meeting, our ladder truck was involved in a motor vehicle incident in the 2400 block of North Road. Luckily, no injuries were reported. The truck was a donation to the fire department by an anonymous donor and was insured for the value we paid for it. The vehicle was written off, unfortunately. Uh, the contributing factors to this incident are the road surfacing on Gabriola, the narrow roads, and the soft shoulder. The vehicle was approaching a car when it moved slightly over and caught its wheel on the soft shoulder, which took it into the ditch. Um, I'm asking Gabriola residents to write letters to Modi who need to improve road surfacing or we're going to end up with a fatality on Gabriola. So I ask all the landowners and residents of Gabriola to, to write letters in support of resurfacing Gabriola's roads. Thank you. The long range plan will be to replace the ladder truck. The ladder truck was a 28 year old uh, truck. Main advantage of it was an elevated master stream, an elevated platform to work from. The loss of the ladder truck will, will not affect insurance ratings. It was a backup truck. And I would ask, yeah, can we ask the residents to it? Um, so, yeah, the, in the long range, we're, we're looking for a ladder truck. It's going to take a little while to find the right one. Be looking for an older one that is uh, considered in the backup position. Um, and we'll keep our eyes out. I've got feelers out in other fire departments looking right now. Um, good. Uh, I'm going to do the training report and then I've got a couple resolutions I'd like to come back to the board for. Um, so, the training report. Um, five officers are participating in the Engine Boss course. The Engine Boss course is a wildland course that takes our officers through running an engine company on wildfire. Um, the event will be hosted in Arrington, BC. It's a one day event. So we're happy that we were able to get five seats in that. That's great training. We have, have another four members that are trained up to be engine boss. It's great skills to bring back to the island, and as well, it gives us more capability to be deployed in the future. So big thanks to the officers that stepped up there. Um, the fire department will be putting on um, wildfire training to certify five of our newest members. This is the basic standard for operating on a wildfire. We have also offered some spots to our partners, Mudge and DeCourcy. Um, we often invite them to our training club <coughs> just to uh, give them the ability to access training resources. They will be paying for spots in that course, so the course will uh, work out net neutral for the department and pay for, pay for our instructors. Um, upcoming training for the month. Um, last night we just completed live fire and CPR research. So our recruits were doing live fire while our FR and EMRs were doing <coughs> CPR research. Um, March uh, 12th will be superior tanker accreditation practice. So we'll be doing that practice that I discussed. March 19th will be structural protection training. So that's where we pull out our, our structural protection trailer that we purchased a year ago. And yeah, just getting, getting that ready for the coming season. 
So in that trailer it contains pumps and sprinklers and all types of equipment to protect structures from wildfires. And then the last practice, March 26, will be our platoon practice. And we work in our platoons on basic skills. They will be covering ladders that night. Good, so that's my training report. Um, due to the truck being lost, um, the ladder truck, we, we only got the value of the uh, insurance, which it was insured for 20000 <coughs> So I'd ask the tru trustees for a resolution to use insurance money from the ladder truck of uh, 19000 which there was a $1,000 deductible. And I'd ask for an extra 21000 of the deployment fund to purchase a Type 6 engine. Type 6 engine, basically a pickup truck. We put a water tank and some pumps on. We'd outfit it with uh, some lights and sirens, deck wing. Um, it would be a great asset until we get our, our wildland engine that is in order right now. And it would make sense to put a, put a truck in the position of truck 9 since we've lost the ladder. And it's going to take a little while to find the right ladder. So I feel that we should uh, use the insurance money plus an extra 21000 to I'll purchase another truck and some equipment for wildfire to uh, help cover us this summer. So you've got a vehicle that's forty thousand dollars. Are you hanging on? Up, up to forty thousand. I've got. I'm looking at some used vehicles in around twenty thousand, and then I leave twenty thousand to kind of equip that with pumps and lights, and, hmm. right. and would give us a, another backup engine coming into this summer. Would it be deployable or would it be? Yes, it would be totally deployable. So in the long range, it could help earn money to buy that ladder back. Okay. Um, what time frame are you thinking of purchasing this on? Like within the next couple of months? Next couple of weeks. Next couple done. of weeks. I mean, it is a bit of a surprise, but the accident of the ladder truck was a complete surprise to you. So yeah. we're just kind of working with, with what we've got here. I mean, we can. We've got the 19000 from the insurance. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Um, we might have to review the, the finances. Okay. Just because, you know, there's another things coming up too. Uh, but uh, what, what do you want to do today? Do you want to? I don't say no to it, but ask them we should put the money for it. Do you want to make us to make a motion based on your review of How about releasing the nineteen thousand that was in the ladder truck? Um, then we can make the purchase of the truck so we can find maybe money or donations to get yeah. the truck up and running. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then that doesn't affect the budget because that was money that was already allocated to the ladder. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. And then we'll bring it back to the next meeting for discussion on equipping. Sure. Yeah. That sounds good. So, uh, so can I get a motion to release the 19000 to uh, purchase a new vehicle? So I move that uh, the bar is allowed to use the 19000 insurance money to purchase a new truck with the idea that it will be outfitted at a later time. Subject to finance. <clears throat> Subject to finance. I'll second that. All in favor? All in favor. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Um, other information. We were, um, we did have uh, Captain Goodall put in a report on, um, on our uh, fuel usage or fuel consumption for 2023. Um, he's away on call right now. So I'm just going to try to find it. Could I come back to that? But 
Um, I wanted to fill the fill in the, the uh, trustees that we were successful with a BC hydro grant for three uh, EV chargers, and these EV chargers would uh, help to um, reduce carbon footprint that the fire department is, is working towards. Um, and we would be looking at putting one EV charger down at Fire Hall 2 and two EV chargers at Fire Hall 1 here. Uh, the, two, the two chargers would be in the bay, so they would only be accessed by, um, by the membership and with the future goal of buying command vehicles in the future that would be EV. <laughs> um, we need a couple, th uh, three thousand dollars to complete that um, that purchase, and uh, I just wanted to bring that up to the board. And if it sounds like the finances are really tight, then and we're stuck. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to present that to the board tonight and uh, make sure that they're aware of that. So BC Hydro is giving you a grant is an additional three thousand dollars in on the fire department to complete it. Yeah. Okay. They pay for the chargers themselves and most of the labor. It's just there's a little bit of overage. I don't know uh, exactly where that comes in, but uh, right. uh, Jeff is going to present that tonight. So. Okay. Is this question? <clears throat> um, sure. When. Would this be happening? How soon would this be happening? Um, How soon is the PC Hydro ready to go ahead? Yeah, as soon as we give the go ahead. So, I mean, we could we could move it to the next meeting, but at least it's a a good thing to consider when you guys are looking at the finances and to see if it's in, in the budget. No, I just wondered if it was like a signed contract. With them. No, I don't know. So I it's in the next month or two. Is yeah. what's going to happen? Not tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. How much does the, uh, the grant work? Um, it's covering like 80% of it, so the extra 2000 So I think it's around $10,000 or $12,000. What happened with the community hall? Did it want to get a, a charger? Uh, I missed the last meeting, but I don't think it's a fit of yet. But yeah, this is our future, future goal to look for that. And I could pull up the fuel consumption uh, report to if you want to look at that. So should we table that to the yeah. next meeting, pending a uh, little check in our... Sure. It's okay to wait until next meeting. Yeah. Months. yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get it on the agenda just so you guys have time to think about it and, and look at it. Okay. So I'm going to say a lot to the next meeting then. Did you have uh, another one as well? Yeah, I've got the fuel consumption report. I could read out to mm -hmm. if you guys want to hear that. Sure. I wasn't really prepared to present it, but here we oh, go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Jeff Goodall, our captain of Paul 2, is tracking our fuel consumption on all the trucks. So each time we go out, we make sure we write the mileage and the um, and which truck it's coming off of, um, so we can track that data. And uh, this was kind of started by um, by Captain Chernenko when he was on on the uh, department, and it was the goal was to look at how much carbon we carbon footprint we're producing and where we could reduce it. So in 2023, the Israel Fire Department consumed over 8,500 8, liters of fuel and 12,000 liters of propane to operate apparatus and assist heating in the fire halls. Total value of the fuel is in, is in excess of $33,000. We've got the exact numbers, obviously, on our income statements. Um, the extra cost is in good. Um, aside from the propane usage, the largest fuel uh, consumption is our Command 6. So that's the truck I drive around, the little white bridge liner. <coughs> and the duty officers take that on the weekends when they're responding to calls. 
It's estimated it burned 3,500 liters of gasoline and it's at the cost of $6,500. The vehicle was driven uh, 20,400 kilometers in 2023 as it was used to respond to every one of the calls. So we had 564 calls for the year. The Gabriel Fire Department received last year. The second most driven vehicle and hence the second largest fuel consumption was our, our medical response vehicle, Med 7 from Hall 2. That's that uh, pilot, the red pilot that's driving around. Uh, vehicle responding mostly to medical calls. Uh, kilometers driven on Med 7 was 8,000 kilometers with 1,322 liters of fuel consumed at a cost of $2,385. Uh, by comparison, in 2022, Command 6 was driven uh, 17,000 kilometers, 623 kilometers, and consumed $5,404 of gasoline. And Med 7 drip was driven 6,000 kilometers, 700 and, or 875 kilometers, um, and consumed $2,000 and $163 in gasoline. So electric vehicle initiatives and the effort to meet the federal um, greenhouse gas reduction, ve electric vehicles are replacing consumable engines powered powering vehicles throughout the public sector. We've been seeing police departments across the country are switching to EV. Fire departments are using EV pumper trucks and electric delivery trucks are becoming more frequent. One of the drawbacks to having an electric vehicle is the lack of infrastructure to charge them. The BC government has, has an initiative provide funding for electric chargers in the form of rebates. The GVFD applied for and received a grant to install up to four chargers. One, once completed, the authorized, authorized rebate to Gabriel Fire Department is amount, so here it is, $6,114. The proposal would be to install two chargers at that fire hall, at fire hall number one, and to encourage uh, to transit transition to electric vehicles as well. Prepare GDFD for uh, the command vehicles, but we'd like to really encourage obviously our membership to use those. <coughs> uh, the EV command and first responder vehicles in our near future. Annual fuel and maintenance savings of about 15,000 would equate to the equivalency of the vehicles over the projected 10 year life cycle of these frontline units. Good, and then there's a table that shows for each truck how much fuel is consumed and how much diesel or gasoline. <coughs> And so we'll, we'll hand that to the trustees so it can become part of the, part of the minutes. Good. Sorry, I wasn't quite prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no problem. <coughs> uh, great. Here we go. Um, I'll find out some of the facts. Oh, Paul has something. I have a question for Will. Uh, the level of service for the fire department, are we full service or what's our level of service? Yeah, our level of currently is full service. <clears throat> um, our membership supports that with the number of people we have and the training. Okay, can I, can I make a motion that the board uh, create a policy with respect to the fire department having a full service operation? 
level, and that would then become policy, and we wouldn't have to uh, pass motions each year. So my motion would be that the uh, Board of Trustees develop policy with respect to the operational levels of the fire department. Um, just, just for uh, a quick question, we have under new business serval, service level policy. Is that similar to what you're talking? My, my apologies. Yeah, it's there. Okay. Can we just put yeah, that on the bill then? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if there's nothing else for the fire chief's report, then uh, I'll move on. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, election policy amendment. Um, so Jesse sent around a few amendments to the election policy uh, in the email. Um, I, I don't suppose you all saw it. Um, do you want to speak to it, Jesse? Before we go ahead? Um, yeah, basically the amendments are just um, in the last meeting, we, John made a motion to remove or start to add some of the. Um, on the sorry, <laughs> on the nomination application form, so we included part of that into the election draft on the last motion. I am requesting that we take that out and then also out of the uh, nomination candidate nomination form. It shouldn't have been in there. It was discussed previously to remove it all out. However, there was one section that didn't get removed out. John caught it, which is great. Um, but instead of including it, I'd like to remove it because with the uh, nomination, you don't need to be an, an eligible voter. And that's basically what that nomination is saying. If we keep it in there, so I would like to remove it. <coughs> <coughs> um, <that's good. coughs> uh, can I get a motion to approve the amendment changes? A second? Oh, Kent and Dale? Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Okay, great. Uh, the next item is Privacy Act. I'm not sure where that item came from. Oh, yes, oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. A couple of housekeeping items. This will be the March report. Uh, the board and I have been counseled that we cannot confirm or deny the identity of any person who has made an application under the Freedom of Information and Privacy Act. Should an individual indicate that they are an applicant, we are not able to confirm or deny their comments. Item two is due to public comments regarding the timelines of requests following the January 2024 meeting report. I'll reiterate my statement made in January. Once the OIDC is involved, that increases the time it takes to resolve the request, as all the material must go to Victoria for review. What this means is we are working on Victoria's schedule and not ours. <coughs> My third and final item for housekeeping is, I was contacted by the Life on Gabriel Media Society and advised by them that they had received correspondence with respect to the use of the word rebuffed in my January report in regard to setting up a meeting with an applicant. I stand by the use of that word, and the point being is the meetings were never happened, or the meetings never happened. For February activity, on the 5th of February 2024, as a result of the work of the GFPID Privacy Works, and in consultation with the OIPC, roughly 100 pages of documents were released to an applicant. The bulk of the release consisted of invoices from a third party. Also were released were in-camera meeting minutes, portions of which were redacted. This release occurred in addition to a release of the material on the same request dated June 2nd, 2023. Noteworthy on this request as well was that the board had to make inquiries and await responses to ensure that an individual's personal income tax was not being released. On the 12th of February, 2024, 
We were advised that the applicant had submitted correspondence related to the release of the February 5th, 2024. Upon our review, it was found that on one invoice, the unit price and quantity of an item, but not the total cost had been redacted. This was an error and it was corrected. However, also on the same invoice was the personal information of several people that was correctly redacted. On the 19th of February, the board closed the front office and the fire hall to the public. Several considerations were taken into account prior to making this decision. Generally speaking, this is the slowest time of the year for both phone calls and public attendance at the hall. By taking this action, we hope to relieve the pressure caused by the multiple FOIs on the corporate officer. It is hoped that the FOI issue will be resolved by the time the busy season starts in the spring and we can reopen the office. On the 20th of February, correspondence was received from the OIPC from a new investigator regarding a complaint from an applicant. This involved materials from June 2023. This request is separate from the one previously noted. It appears there are now two different OIPC investigators working on the same file. We're working with Privacy Works to sort this out. The information contained in this report is not intended to get into a he said, she said situation. It is to show the public what their tax dollars are being spent on. These funds were not budgeted. The situation has gotten to a point where local expertise has been exceeded and there is no clearing in sight. The board is working with Privacy Works and the OIPC and in so doing is trying to prevent these matters from going to a hearing in front of the Privacy Commissioner, which would cost even more both in time and money. This entire situation has been going on for 22 months and is having a negative impact on the fire department. The corporate officer continues to work in an environment that is both frustrating and exhausting. In addition to all the work that must be done to address the multiple FOIs, the day-to-day administrative operations of the fire department must be handled. The last two years has seen a notable increase in calls for service received by the fire department, thus increasing the administrative workload. Volunteer hours also continue to increase as we work through this issue. The invoice from Privacy Works for February 2024 was $4,987.51, bringing the total thus far for 2024 to $9,513. The end of the report. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Questions or comments? Okay. Moving on to new business. Um, service level policy for Gabriel Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, Paul is probably back to you. Was it Will that uh, was going to be I believe Paul was going to be He's he pointing to you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, the training originally was the called the BC uh, playbook or, or training uh, trainings minimum training standard. They went by the name playbook. Now they've changed it to it's the BC minimum structural firefighter training standard. Um, we review this constantly. Um, it's constantly at our officers meetings for discussion about how our membership's progressing and uh, we review it we're reviewing it annually with the trustees um, just to s- simplify it we thought we would put a policy in place um, we can have a policy or a bylaw but a policy i think would work better <coughs> for amending it quicker um, and so the policy would state currently we, we look to operate at the highest level, which would be full service. And uh, the two other options would be interior. So you work interior, which is a basic level for working just inside a smaller structure. And you cannot respond to hazmat calls and other incidents. And the other one would be exterior operations where you're stuck just operating from the exterior <coughs> building. 
but I would rank us right now currently at the highest level, which is full service, and I would look to have the policy state Gabriel Fire Department in full service on this time. <clears throat> so the policy would be that the trustees would just have that maintained every year without us having to do so you, you just don't want us to, to say right now this this would be a, a statement of fact that we are determining that we will continue, that we will just be in full service. Yes. Which, which means that we then have to help commit to keeping your yeah, it's a consideration with budget and yeah. equipment and yeah. training. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so without that, you can't, you can't go into the building. There's different levels. So with, in, so with the full service, as long as we have a pre-fire plan and, and we have our members trained on scene, then we can go fully interior and do that attack. Uh, if we go in middle ground interior, we can't go into a larger structure. It's a big commercial building. We're stuck to a smaller residential structure. And then if we're exterior, then we can't go oh, anywhere exactly. inside even if someone's trapped. So we, train, we train everyone to be full service. And we have carried on with the accreditation for hazmat and our NFPA 1001 firefighter level one and two, and all our officer training at NFPA 1021. So we've got all the accreditation in place. So there's really, um, yeah, it's really just to formalize that, and make sure that everyone's aware. Thank you. Just so so we, we are at full service now. Yeah. There was a, there was a resolution in 2019 Mm -hmm. to be full service. Yeah. Okay. And has that been like updated yearly or, or I mean what uh yeah, just so I'm hundred percent clear on what's we were what reviewing it out annually. Okay. Um it was brought up to review it in December of each year. And it still can be it I probably will actually remind us now that that policy is in place or remind us to review uh, uh, review it and Make sure that it's current. Okay, so um, we'd be looking for a motion to create a policy that states that the fire department is full service. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and maintain, maintains that. It is unmaintained. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you have a comment? No, I would just suggest at the end of that motion uh, that. That the policy he dealt with at the April meeting. Okay. Um, do you want to make that motion? I can, but I can't hear what everybody is saying. So it's right. Um, I make the motion that uh, the fire department is uh, operating at the level of full service, and that policy be created <clears throat> to cover the service levels of the fire department and that policy be presented to the board at the April 2024 meeting. Do I have a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay. Can I just uh, clarify who would be creating this policy? Would that be yourself, Will? Yeah, myself and make sure that the chair is aware of it. Okay. I'll come up with it too. Perfect. All right, all in favor? All approved. Great, thanks everyone. Um, the next order of business is um, we've received a letter of resignation from our corporate officer. So um, she has indicated that she will work up until the election date for the annual general election and um, that uh, we should begin seeking a new corporate officer or administrative officer or whatever you want to call the role. And um, so that is up for discussion. I would like to make a suggestion that we form a hiring committee and that, um, you know, we, we uh, move quickly on this because 
we would like there to be as much overlap as possible between the departing corporate officer and the incoming corporate officer. And um, I'd like the new corporate officer, if possible, to experience election. an election with uh, the existing corporate officer present. Um, so I would like to discuss this a little bit in terms of the role of the corporate officer, the amount of time the corporate officer works and the compensation. And then if we can all agree on that, I would like to form a hiring committee and that will advertise the position and conduct elections and bring back a recommendation to the board. Does that work for everybody? Oops. Paul, you have a, your hand up too? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, to discuss this, Paul, just to clarify, should I get someone to make the motion before we discuss it, or can we discuss it and then make the motion for the forming of the hiring committee? I would uh, go with the motion and then discussion. And I would, I would suggest that the, uh, the motion be made for the hiring committee and then discuss, you can, you can discuss everything under that motion. Okay. Just to make sure I'm following from policy. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, so can I get a motion from someone to form a hiring committee that will consist of, and we've discussed this already, myself and Diana and Kent. Was it just the three of us on it? And yeah, I'm Paul Chris. sit in as well. I'm coming in with it as well. And Chris as well. <clears throat> so can I get someone to make that motion, please? Um, both Paul and Eric, so Paul made the motion, and Eric seconded. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Discussion. Okay. Before we go on that, let's start the discussion. Um, so I, I would like to, and we, we've already sort of discussed this a little bit, I think that the corporate officer position needs to be full-time. Um, and I think I'd like to suggest that we move to a salary-based compensation model. Uh, based on a 40 hour work week. Does everyone agree with that? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, based on the current rate of pay, the hourly rate of pay for a corporate officer, that would equate to, and I sent this in an email, I sent an email around earlier, just um, with the uh, job description that we use to hire the current <coughs> corporate officer. <coughs> And I just suggested a few um, amendments, and I have the recommended salary in there too. And I believe it was forty. Was it? I better just look it up here. I get it wrong. Um, does anyone have it there? I just want to make sure that it's in the record. The exact. Well, it's probably uh, fifty-two forty. Yeah, what was the amount of 40 um, on that? I guess it's just divided by two. 4850. Yeah. So the monthly salary, 4850. Yeah. Everyone agree with that? Mm -hmm. And that's gross. Gross. Yes. It, for the administrative position and, and corporate on too. It, yeah, they're rolled together. So uh, I'm proposing that we keep them in one position. Right. And they would have both duties. And that salary would be 4850 per month. And right. the benefits would be the same as currently. So you start receiving them after. I'm not 100% clear on the benefits package that we currently have, just to be honest. So I'll just put that out there that I'd say that we should just keep that the same. I don't really know what it is, so I don't want to stick it right now. And it's beginning after one year MSP, dental, and RSP? Uh, yeah. I, I'd seen a note from Jesse that MSP is not included currently. No, because it's paid for. It. It's paid for. It's already paid. It's already paid for. Of course, the problem is paid for it now, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <clears throat> um, if you want to include the salary and moving to full time, the motion is just saying form a committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we either need to amend the motion or pass that motion to form the committee and then. 
indicate what the job, the salary and it's moving to full time. I, I agree, yeah. That's sort of why I was asking the process question earlier, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure exactly the right process to, because some of this stuff I think we do need to vote on, you know, the salary. But the we can do that, on, so. if you'll see later down in our in camera. In terms of the compensation and stuff? And all of that, that, that becomes personnel, so we can move into the, the nitty gritty in, in camera. <clears throat> Okay. Is that, do you agree with that, Paul? That the... I couldn't hear what was said. Um, that we can vote on the, the moving to full time and the compensation vote on that in camera. Or can we just vote on that in a public meeting? I suggest it deals with the contract, so it probably should be in camera. Okay. All right. So we all... I would... I would, uh, I would like to amend the motion that I made to include the authorization for the hiring committee to do the appropriate advertising. Right. Right. <clears throat> okay. So can I get a seconder for the amended motion? Thank you. All in favor for the amendment, adding the amendment to the motion. Okay. Can you just read that back? Do we just, just, just need to ask the clarification? Yeah. So I have authorization of the hiring committee and then. And the three members that are good, four members on the hiring committee. All right. <clears throat> so the original motion was. To form a hiring committee consisting of John, Diana, Kent, Chris, and Paul. Yeah. yeah. And then I need clarification on the amended motion. I have authorization. And authorization to advertise the position. Yeah. Quickly. Um, while we're on this, uh, what about conducting hiring? Should we authorize, or sorry, introduce? Should we? Uh, Look at this with the hiring <clears throat> I'm just making sure that the uh, hiring committee has the authorization to conduct interviews as well. Do we want the hiring committee? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to amend that? Or is that we, are we comfortable with it as it is? Well, so far we voted on the amendment. Amendment <clears throat> doesn't mean that we voted on the motion. No, I, I understand. Yeah, the motion's still open. I, it depends on what everybody's comfortable with, really. I, okay. I think that the hiring committee established the hiring committee who's going to make recommendations to the board based on the interviews. I, yes. When people were interviewing for the deputy chief, I do not believe that um, <clears throat> that was attached to a motion to that hiring committee. I wasn't part of it. No, it was the job of the hiring committee. Yeah. To do right. all the interviews. Yeah. Okay. And if we have four on the hiring committee, yeah. that doesn't And then we reported board. back. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. No, but if you want to recognize the hiring chief, so. Perfect. Okay, then. So, can I have a motion to accept? Or sorry, can I have a vote to accept the amended motion as Jesse <coughs> read? All in favor. Great, thank you. Is there any late items? I would just like to make a comment and, and say thank you on behalf of the board to Jesse for your hard work. So much We'll we'll miss you for sure. Yeah. And thank you for giving us such a long lead time <clears throat> up until the action. That's very, very grateful. Okay, is there any comments from the um, audience? You don't have anything to say? All right, can I get a motion to adjourn? Okay, seconder, yes. All in favor? Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you.